Hey, Bob. Um, I wanted to ask uh, if you could follow up on something you said last week about how you guys would like the D to more be more involved in the offense this year. Um, I, I know you probably don't want to give it too much away in terms of uh, the whole philosophy here, but how do you do that? And, and how do you maybe utilize guys like Brent Burns and Eric Carlson uh, even more? Yeah, I think uh, we've always encouraged our D, uh, whether it was, you know, my staff last year or, or Pete's staff, we always encourage our D to get up the ice and be that extra attacker on the rush. What I'm talking about is more activating our D in the offensive zone. So jumping into holes, um, not being so stationary, waiting for that, you know, that low to high pass and, and, and D to D. But we want our D to be on our toes. So, yeah, we're going to... Um, you know, when we study the league this summer and you look at the elite D in the league and, and uh, you know, uh, Carlson in Washington and Hedman in Tampa Bay, uh, Yossi and, and, and uh, uh, Ekholm and Ryan Ellis in Nashville, um, you start watching those guys and how they create offense as a team and those guys are a big part of that. So I, I'm going to encourage all our D to uh, be a lot more active in the offensive zone is, is, is more or less what we're talking about. And there's structure behind that as well. It's just not run and gun. Uh, if they go down, someone's covering. Uh, and those are things that we're going to go through some offensive zone sequences and we have some terminology behind that but uh, and some set plays that we want to start trying to run in the offensive zone. Yeah, obviously, you know, Carlson um, last year, we, we've heard Doug say about how he's coming in as healthy as he's been with the Sharks. Um, you know, I know you haven't seen him on the ice yet, but you've, ta you've talked about how important it is that he gets off to a good start this season. What, what do you need to see from him this, at the start of this season that maybe wasn't there at the start of last year? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, whether it was injuries or not, I think uh, he was guilty of it. And I think a lot of the veterans are guilty of it. And we talked about this last night as a group. I held a team meeting last night about how important our start is in these next uh, so many days of camp. And, and I think that whether you're going a long run the year before um, or you're a new face in, I thought the veterans were probably guilty of trying to ease their way into camp, feel their way, uh, their way around and start trying to, you know, uh, press the on switch when it comes to the first game of the season and it just doesn't work that way um, you know I stressed last night the importance of, of making sure that um, you know day one tomorrow when we get on that ice um, we essentially have 11 days if you count the two mandatory, mandatory days off uh, we play on the 14th um, you know so you have 13 days of camp minus the two days up we have 11 days to get ready for uh, the start of the season and uh, we can't afford in a, in a compacted schedule like this to be in that same situation as we've been in the last two years. So we really stressed that last night, talked about it, and, and, and not just Carly, but you know, he's a guy that's got to uh, dive in. He's got to dive in tomorrow, and he's got to uh, you know, use these practices and scrimmages like they're games because we don't have any preseason games. Okay. Hey, Bob. Uh, speaking of uh, you know getting your defense more involved in the offensive zone, uh, I, I imagine the corresponding thing is that the forwards will have to commit uh, even more you know defensively to cover for uh, you know your your guys your defensemen who might be below the dots. And so anyway, uh, you know how do you get that to happen? You know improve that commitment from last year um, from the forwards. Yeah, just because we're asking our guys to uh, uh, be more aggressive as a five-man unit in the offensive zone. And we did change some things last year on looks on our forecheck, um, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to be aggressive on our forecheck. We, we changed some looks on how we uh, quick attack the net once we regain possession. This is a new wrinkle that we're putting in. But, of course, there's with that becomes hard rules for the forwards. And, uh, um, you know, it's just not five guys uh, um, disregarding the need to be back and, and, and covering on a turnover. It's uh, – uh, there's hard rules that we're going to be implementing into this system, and uh, the forwards are going to have to take a lot of onus and, and, and be responsible for uh, um, for the coverage if the if the D goes down, and uh, um, that's something that we're going to introduce in the next couple of days and, and, and practice. And just a couple uh, roster questions. Uh, of course, uh, Alex True is out with an injury. Uh, can you speak to just maybe expectations of when he might be back uh, at camp or in you know with with you guys? Yeah, from all I know right now, obviously he's busy with a lot of guys here. I think that the trainers are telling me that he's 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 a few days away. I think maybe a week at most. I don't want to you know don't quote me on that as 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 uh, exact, but in that area, I don't think it's a long term thing. Um, you know, he's close to being ready, and uh, you know, as a possibility, it's it's day to day situation. So, um, you know, take that as it is. Mm -hmm. And with uh, Ozzy uh, uh, Weisblatt, I know he's in Arizona. I don't know what the rules are because he's not on your final camp roster. Like, can he work out with you guys or is he you know, just, you know, what, what, 
what can he do with you guys uh, not being on the final roster but being in Arizona? Yeah, the only the rule that I'm uh, made aware of uh, is the the guys that are on the roster in camp are the guys that are going to be participating in all the events, whether it's a video or on ice or off ice. Um, so, you know, those guys are my concern right now, unless I hear different. So um, only the guys on the roster are going to be in, in, uh, in the day to day. So uh, well, how can Ozzy be uh, or what is he participating in then, I guess, since he's in Arizona? Yeah, as far as I know, um, you know, there may be another group that, that's coming in at some point. But uh, um, again, I'm just responsible for the guys that are here. And, uh, oh, okay. you know, All right, thank probably you. not the best question I can answer for you, to be honest. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no worries. Dan Rosen? Yeah, Bob, um, two questions for you. One, is there is there anybody uh, in camp other than True that, you know, you, you don't expect on the ice tomorrow? Uh, no, not as of right now. They had their uh, physicals today. Um, you know, they had their testing today. Um, so as of right now, um, you know, I'll find out more at the end of the day. But uh, from what I'm hearing right now, that we're in good shape um, and ready to go with everybody on the ice tomorrow. Sounds good. Good for you. Um, the other question I wanted to ask you, more of a big picture, because you guys had to move training camp on the road, and obviously we know you're starting all the games on the road, but just moving this on the road to, you know, uh, the training camp, what other responsibilities or tasks has that added onto your plate, uh, you know, that maybe wouldn't be there if you guys were able to have training camp at home? Um, you know, I think, to be honest, I mean, we have a great setup here. And, uh, um, you know, there's little things. Uh, we're doing a lot of a lot of our uh, activities as a team at the hotel and we have a lot of ballroom set up here and, and spaced out so we have enough space to have people in and have uh, you know video meetings and team meetings and, and uh, meals and those kind of things so that's different I mean you know instead of guys just um, leaving and going home for the day um, you know they have a lot of dead time as well in the afternoons so uh, you know we're trying to come up with some ideas to keep these guys busy but uh, uh, for the most part it, it doesn't change what I do on the ice it's just that we're going to be doing a lot of our work as a coaching staff over here and basically just going to the rink to put the skates on getting on the ice and coming right back to the hotel so you don't near, spend a near enough uh, the same amount of time at the rink. Kylan Mills. Hey coach Kylan with Cron4. Um, I'm just curious, you were kind of talking about how everything is sped up and there's a shortened training camp this season. Um, is that an extra challenge for you as a coach when you're trying to evaluate players, trying to, you know, form your lines? And are you, are you expecting there to be some flexibility as, as you start games because of that? Yeah, I think there's going to be some flexibility. I think that, uh, um, you know, what we've tried to do is, is try to keep some semblance of you know, opening night uh, line combinations together through camp for the next couple of weeks. Obviously, that's going to change day to day, but we're real, we're trying real hard with that as, as well as uh, power play units um, that we're going to start working on immediately. Um, but we haven't played in 10 months, nine months, and, and, and 11 days is not a lot. But, uh, um, you know, my message to the veterans last night is, again, not easing into things and using these, these, these practices and scrimmages as our preseason. And to the rookies, to the young guys looking for, you know, to fill a spot. And there are some available, I believe. And um, we don't have that luxury of evaluating five or six preseason games. So they're going to be evaluated on their practices, their scrimmage, the teal and white games, things like that. And, uh, um, you know, it is what it is. We wish it was a little different. But, uh, um, yeah, we're it's, it's a sprint. I also talk to the guys about not just the next 11 days, but, um, you know, by February 11th, we're going to play our 14th game of the year against L.A. And that's a quarter of the season gone for the first 28 days after puck drop 28 days later, you're already quartering your season with this compacted schedule. So again, it's not just with the next 11 days, it's about that being our, our foundation for a good start. Thanks coach. Thanks. Curtis. Hi Bob. Uh, you just mentioned sort of the young guys. Do you, do you sense sort of a different uh, mentality from, from those guys this year to trying to crack the roster? Obviously last year, maybe, you know, there wasn't as many guys who maybe, grab the bull by the horns, but do you kind of sense things being a little bit different this year amongst that group? I do. I think that, uh, um, you know, the good thing about going into this year, some of those guys got a real good taste of the NHL last year. And, uh, um, you know, I got to learn their games a little bit. So there's that little bit of familiarity with those guys. Um, I think they feel a little bit of a, a comfort level um, when it comes to knowing you know, what they're, they're at what I expect and, and what our coaching staff expects from them. So 
Um, you know, and there's also other guys that are coming in that, uh, um, you know, that are new to the organization that are, they're looking for a shot, uh, maybe first year pro guys. And, uh, um, so there's a little bit of that sense of excitement and some energy. Um, you could tell last night at the, uh, opening team orientation meeting, I think there was, you know, you could tell the guys haven't been together for a long time and they're excited to get to work and, uh, a little bit of nervous energy as well from some of the young guys. So it's that, it's a feeling you want in training camp from as a head coach. Did guys like Marlo and Nieto who were in the bubble last year talk about their experiences a little bit and what can guys maybe learn from them? Yeah, we touched on uh, not so much them specifically about the teams that really excelled through the bubble and what they dealt with and, and how they thrived on it and, uh, um, you know, and putting the distractions out of your head. And I think, you know, we're not in that strict of a bubble where uh, eventually when we get back to San Jose, life will get back to a little bit of normality for us. Um, but yeah, for the next month, we're in our, I guess, self-imposed bubble. And, uh, um, you know, we look at it as an opportunity to to, to get together again after being off a long time to bond a little bit and to, you know, really no distractions. We're in a hotel and, and uh, um, you know, we got everything at our fingertips here when it comes to service and it's just about us getting over the rink and putting the work in. So, um, you know, there's no excuses for not being ready. Obviously no, no jumbo at camp this year. I'm sure it's a little bit unusual for everybody, but does that allow other guys to utilize their voice a little bit more, maybe be more vocal in the room? Yeah, I've already seen that, to be honest with you. I think in the last couple of weeks being in San Jose and, and seeing Cooch and uh, even last night, uh, how certain guys handled themselves and certain guys that had questions and, and you know, stood up and, um, you know, Tommy Hurdle and, and uh, um, you know, guys like Vlasic as well and Marlowe as well, guys that I think they know they have to pick up the slack from, from Jumbo. And, uh, and Burns and Carlson and Carlson, all those guys, I think it was, uh, um, you, you could see there was a sense of, like I said, excitement again, but also um, I think those guys know that uh, um, it's, it's their time. It's, you know, we got to pick up the slack for more jumbo and, you know, there's certain guys that got to uh, take that opportunity.